So if you're gonna put this in a pocket, you need a deep pocket, right? Because is it out of ink? You hate ads, I hate ads. You know what I love? Patreon.com slash inkdependence, where patrons get access to a patron-only Discord, ad-free videos, and the joy of knowing they help support this channel. Hello folks, welcome to Ink Dependence. I'm Mike, and today I have a pin for you that you've seen on the channel before a uh, time or four. This is the Platinum Curados. This one here is the matte version, which I believe is the most recent version of this pin. Uh, this is of course matte black. It does come in, I wanna say a blue and a red as well. Maybe a green, I don't know, a few colors and I'm sure they'll add more. But before we get to this one, let's look at a couple of the older models. So these aren't my first ones. My first one was red and it was one of the, uh, the very early batch that had like the little crack that would appear in the feed. Didn't seem to affect how it wrote or anything like that, but they were replacing all those. And at, through the years, Platinum has been sort of making small iterative changes to these pens that are hard to notice, but I think definitely do impact like the, the goodness of the pen. The first ones were a little bit like a little bit glitchy in some ways. Like sometimes the, the door wouldn't completely close. And you can see this is a pretty, this is a pretty complicated mechanism. We'll take it apart. There's a bunch of stuff that, you know, would be helpful to know probably probably about these pens, but I think a lot of that has been kind of subtly changed in the black one. So uh, as you can see, this door mechanism here, you push this down, it's got like this whole mechanism back here, and then it's got a mechanism up the front that opens the door, and it's got, you know, the clicky thing back here with the knock, and it's got this little nubbin down here where this ramp has to come down for that to open. It's all a very kind of complicated system, this pen. Oh, oh hi, Mr. Nose, did you? Did you want to help with this review? But what do you think of the Kyrados? Are you curious? I'm glad a cat showed up for this one. So let's talk about the black one and uh, and all that jazz. But um, I do think they've gotten a lot of these kinks sort of ironed out as they've gone. So this one, the matte black version, is I think the most serious version of this pen. Uh, these have a little bit of um, kind of an unserious vibe because of that translucent or transparent plastic look to them. But this one has sort of a... A sort of a soft matte finish to it. And I got this in DC this year from luxury brands who are the platinum distributors. They're like, here, try this one out for a while. And so I decided I was going to really put it through its paces and just carry it a whole bunch. And honestly, uh, this is my favorite of the bunch. And I, like I said, I've probably got five or six of these things now. And I wanted to give it a, a long term review because sometimes this matte sort of kind of like rubbery feel can go bad or can scuff up or scratch off or something like that. And so I have just not been careful with this pen. Uh, I clip it to Shirts, I throw it in bags. Uh, it just use it like any normal pen. And as you can see the finish on here, there's some um, like maybe a scuff, maybe kind of a scuff there. Is there anything else? No, that's, that's kind of it. That's kind of it. Um, as far as like scuffs and such, none of the paint has come off the clip. The, uh, the nib is still good. There's not like a bunch of ink down here. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really kind of held up. Hey bud, can I get you to can I get you to go down on the floor for a little while? See you later, nose. Mwah. All right, uh, minor cat interruption. So let's take a look at this pen. Walk you through it in case you haven't seen this before. Up here is uh, where your uh, or your nib will come out. You do have this little bump right here, and that's because that's where this lever will go, and that's kind of a functional part of this pen operating. And so you don't want to have that. You don't want to take this off. Um, if that annoys you, that's going to be an aesthetic thing that you might not like, but it is functional for this pen. So you got to leave it there. It does have a pretty small nib there, and this is a fine point. The extra fine, uh, I think this one's an extra fine, actually. The extra fine is extremely fine. Like, it's a very... The extra fine is extremely fine on these Platinums. It's uh, it's it's very needly, kind of too needly for me to use a whole lot. Although actually, I need to ink this one up again because this might be really good in some of my planners now that I think about it. Um, I don't think I have any broad nibs in these. I'm not sure if it even comes in broad. I definitely have some mediums, but the fine has been working really well for me. And as I said, I've had this inked up since like last August and um, it's worked out really well for me so far. So you have this whole carrier system up here. You have the clip right here, which you can remove. Although I haven't removed this one, it didn't come with that little slidey removal tool, which was kind of hard to use. But if you just kind of like put a fingernail on it, you can like just pop it off these little ears. Do be careful not to break the ears off or you can't put the, the clip back on. I like the clip just fine. It sits right. It sits right there for me when I'm writing and uh, hasn't caused any issues. But I do have a pretty traditional sort of tripod grip. If you uh, grip it around the side or around the across the front or something like that, you might want to take the, the clip off and you can, but it will have you know, a few pieces of plastic like this here and this little 
uh, guy there and that sort of thing that will remain. So keep that in mind. Then you have here the uh, the belly band between where the uh, the pen unscrews. It says platinum made in Japan there. It says Kyrados on the bottle, bottle on the body. And then you have this very long, very glossy knock here, which um, this is... This knock is very long. I kind of think that one thing they should do to improve this pen is to make the knock shorter. For me, it's not a big deal. It's a single hand, this thing. But it is definitely quite a lot longer than, say, your vanishing points and that sort of thing, which more people can do one-handed. I've got a big old hand, so this is not a problem for me. And I can have it in writing mode and just go like this and, like, take notes. It's a great, like, you know, in a meeting, take notes sort of pen. Although, it does have quite the click on this thing. So, you know, there's that to keep keep track of as well. All right, let's open this up. Inside here, uh, it does start looking kind of complicated, right? Um, this right here is a little notch, which you must follow if you want to remove the carrier that holds your nib and your, uh, your converter. You just take it and follow it around that path. And this comes out. You can take the spring out, um, but like probably don't because if you lose that, you're kind of screwed. Also, don't bend this too much. This is a little bit fragile. I do hope that they shore this up in future models. It's not going to be a problem when the pen is in use or anything like that. Like it's not going to spontaneously break. But if you're a person that fiddles with things too much, you could snap that off and then your pen just will not work. And that's because it needs to have this it needs to have this slidey piece right here with this little ear on it in order to uh, operate the rest of this mechanism. Now, to take off this silver housing, uh, in case you want to switch to a cartridge or something like that, uh, you'll twist it up here. You can actually uh, operate the piston knob just fine back here with this little housing on, so you don't really need to remove this very often, if at all, uh, in other circumstances. To take off this housing, you just twist it right there. You'll see it's following this track right there. And then you just have your uh, your cartridge or your converter or cartridge and your uh, your nib unit. The nib unit is actually very small in this pen. Oh look, I just got a little bit more ink for my fingers. Cool. Uh, so you will need a platinum cartridge or a platinum uh, branded converter because it is a proprietary filling system. But these are actually, I think, the best of the Japanese converters. I, I don't have any problem with these platinum ones. I think they're very good. They don't tend to break up here as some others do. They have a good ink capacity. The piston is uh, is nice and very easy to work. You can see I am pretty much out of ink here. I've just been filling it up with uh, with platinum blue just because I got a bottle of that and it seemed it seemed good. So I just been I just been doing that. Put it all back together. You want to slide this over here. Follow that little track with this little nub in here. Then take this bit. Follow that track with the gray plastic nubbin and around. Now, one thing that I've seen happen is if people have a problem where you're clicking the, the knock and it's not catching, is that sometimes uh, I've seen this be a little bit too uh, a little bit too open. And so you just need to like crimp it down just a little bit so that this gray plastic nub in here doesn't fly out of the track because if it misses that track and it goes underneath it which it can because it's pretty small um, if this is not adjusted right it will just like go in and out and it won't actually catch so you want to have that catch so that might be a thing to check if you've ever had that problem you just put this back on here screw it down and you're ready to go I do like that it's single threaded, so you always have the Kyrados up at the top. I think that's I think that's that's good th good thinking right there. All right, let me wipe my finger off. We'll look at it next to a bunch of other pens. We'll do a writing sample, all that jazz. Okay, here I have it next to a whole bunch of other pens, and in fact, that blue did not really want to come off. That's a good blue. So here we have the Platinum three seven seven six, which is the Sands of Komodo version. Really beautiful pen there. We have the Leonardo Memento Zero. We have of course our new Platinum Kyrados. We have the Pilot Vanishing Point or Pilot cap list, depending on what market you're in, the Twisby Eco and uh, the Lamy Safari just to uh, show some like good length options here. So as you can see, the Kyrados is definitely the longest of all of these, at least when it is not in writing mode. Uh, neither of these other, none of these others are too. So if you're going to put this in a pocket, you need a deep pocket, right? Because the <laughs> the clip up here goes all the way up to here. But you'll also notice that a lot of these others have about the same pocket depth is what I call that, the sort of the depth up to here. And so that pocket depth of uh, 4.8 inches is not wild, even though the pen does look long. You'll just have more of it sticking out of your pocket than you would with some other pens. All right, let's take off some caps. I'm going to leave this here so you can peruse those, uh, those stats while I'm uh, quickly taking off some caps.
All right, so here you go. You can see uh, that it is about the same length as the vanishing point once you have both of those knocks in there, which is interesting given how, given how extra long the knock is on the Kyrados compared to the vanishing point. But once you have deployed the nib, it is just a smidge longer. It is not very much longer at all. Although you can definitely see, I think, more of the nib on this one than you can on here. Uh, you also have the, let's go back through them, the Platinum 3776, the Leonardo Memento Zero, the Twisby Eco, and the Lamy Safari. So it's just a little bit longer than uh, these other pens, but that is also a very common thing with these kinds of retractable pens. You can see capped length, or I guess nib in length, is six inches. Uh, the weight is 26 grams, or right at one ounce, which is not bad at all, I think, for this sort of pen. The material on this one is resin with a little bit of metal for uh, things like the clip and that sort of jazz. The nibs on these are steel. They do not come in a gold option as far as I know or have ever seen but they come in extra fine through at least medium and maybe broad, although I haven't used a broad one. The filling system, platinum cartridge or converter, uh, and the uh, the body diameter here is 13.3 millimeters. So that is kind of wider than I usually go. I usually like it between like 10 and, I don't know, 10 or 11 is kind of my sweet spot, but this 13 millimeter has been just fine. I haven't had a problem maneuvering this pen or using it even for long periods of time. The price uh, is a little bit higher than the previous versions like this one, and that's also usually because it comes in a gift set. So I've seen them from about 96 to about 120 bucks in a gift set, including a bottle of ink uh, and a converter and all that jazz. So uh, kind of everything you need to get started, 96 to 120, seems really good for a pen like this, I think. Um, I will say that something like the Vanishing Point is usually in the uh, like 150 to $200 range, give or take, and that does come with a gold nib instead of steel. But, um, you know, doesn't come with ink or anything like that, uh, except for cartridge. So uh, this is a fair fairly good deal for a really interesting pen if it if it piques your curiosity. All right, let me clean this up. We'll do a little writing sample and uh, away we'll go. Is it out of ink? Okay, so I was not happy with this. And so I was like, huh, that's weird. Am I out of ink entirely? And the answer is, yeah, I'm totally out of ink. Uh, I squeezed that all the way up and there's just no ink here. So I'm going to go ahead and fill it right quick so we can see how this thing fills really. Uh, let's, uh, let's do this. Just unscrew the, the cap there. This is my Platinum Mixable Blue. Which is what I've been using this pen for a while. And suck some ink up, and uh, there we go. So you can see there's a little bit of a little bit of ink on there now, but pretty uh, pretty mess free, honestly. Oh, I got a little bit of a little bit of shards on there. This is a <laughs> a little bit of ink dried along the sides there. Ooh, that was gonna be a mess, y'all. I'm glad I caught that. Okay, um, what this is is uh, essentially dried up ink dust and with any little bit of moisture that is gonna turn right back into ink. It leaks a little bit, so I've got a little bit of ink there. I do. I should like take a, a wet paper towel is what I do and I just go around the threads and I wipe up that ink and then you don't get this. So let me, let me clean this up. Okay, now that this has ink in it, let's see how it writes now. Right. Yep. yep, no problems, uh, which is <laughs> what I usually experience with this pen. It was just uh, entirely out of ink. Look at the mess I've made of myself. I don't usually have that happen. That's what I have to get for hurrying, I suppose. But yeah, no uh, no problems here with writing with this one. It is a very fine line. Let me see if I have another fine nib around here to compare it to. All right, so this uh, Twisby Eco is also a fine. So this is a Twisby fine. So you can see it is quite a lot, uh, quite a lot thinner than this Twisby line here. Uh, not quite as wet. So yeah, it's uh, it's a pretty fine nib and uh, the extra fine is a little bit smaller than that even. So uh, consider that when thinking about these. These uh, Japanese nibs can sometimes be quite a lot finer than you might be ready for if you're usually using a Western fine nib. Uh, it's at least a step below for this uh, for this model here. So there you go. This has been the Platinum Curados in matte black. I really like this pen a lot. I think it is a, I think it is a good compliment, although I would I wouldn't say it's exactly a competitor for the vanishing point. They're just kind of they're kind of very different vibes, even though both are really nice retractable pens. Uh, they're just kind of different vibes, different weights, different styles. 
all that jazz. And I think there's room in the world for both of these for sure. So uh, I I really like this fun little pen. I think it's cool. Uh, and it's definitely one that will get comments sometimes when I'm writing uh, notes in like a faculty meeting or something uh, from some of my, my fellow faculty who are also into fountain pens. Like, oh, yeah, look at that thing. So, yeah, this is a cool pen and I dig it. But uh, it's uh, it's a little quirky. So, you know, give the Platinum Kyrgios a try. I think it's a lot of fun to use and to have. So find these at your favorite Platinum dealer. And of course, thank you very much to uh, Luxury Brands for letting me have this one to, you know, mess with and uh, try to abuse and to show people people uh it's uh, it's been a lot of fun so until next time um peace out